Back in 1895, a German scientist, Wilhelm Röntgen, discovered a new type of light, invisible to the human eye, yet of an energy and nature that allowed it to pass straight through the human body, only being preferentially blocked by the denser parts like bone. Shone onto a photographic plate, it gave extraordinary images like these. These mysterious rays that could pass through our flesh like light through glass became known as X-rays. Quite soon after their discovery, it was noted that just because most of the X-rays passed through living tissue, they didn't necessarily leave it unaffected. And within weeks, Victorian doctors were using X-rays to try and cure all sorts of ailments, including cancer. Taking photos like these, uses a very small dose of x-rays. But it was found that if the dosage was thousands of times bigger, it could damage living tissue inside the body. Now, in here, I've got some real live cancer cells growing and dividing as I speak. Placed under a microscope, the cells themselves are clearly visible. Now, at the other end of this lab, they've got a source of high-energy radiation, like X-rays. Let's see what happens to our cancer cells when they get a quick blast of that. The energy from the beams of radiation damages the DNA, shown here in red. This stops cells replicating or kills them outright. The use of high-energy radiation to attack cancerous growths is known as radiotherapy. But, as with most things in medicine, there's a lot more to take into account as you leave the lab with the intention of trying the process on real people. X-rays aren't the only sort of radiation used to treat cancer, but they are the most common. And different types of radiotherapy can be administered from outside or inside the human body. But whatever method is used, the big problem is that healthy cells are made from the same stuff as cancerous growths, so they can also suffer from intense radiation exposure. Now, imagine this is a section through a patient. These bits here represent all the kind of healthy tissue that should be there. And this, it's been discovered through careful scanning, is a cancerous tumour. Now, with a further leap of the imagination, this is my X-ray gun, capable of firing a stream of highly energetic photons into the body. Firing a beam straight on like this not only heavily damages the cancerous tissue, but also the healthy areas in front of and behind it. But if we set the gun firing whilst it moves on a circular path centred around the cancer, let's see what happens. With this setup, any damage to the healthy tissue is spread out, whilst the cancer receives a concentrated dose. With actual radiotherapy, the doses are carefully split up over time. By giving smaller doses on different days, the body has a chance to repair the limited damage it's received. The tumour can't repair itself nearly so well. Now it's time to give the cancer another blast. Obviously, with real treatment, programmes of radiotherapy and recovery are uniquely planned to maximise damage to the cancer, avoid vital organs, and keep the patient as safe as possible. Now, obviously, this isn't real radiotherapy, but it's this ever-increasing planning and precision of the doses and building in the correct recovery time that's making what's always been a very powerful treatment for some cancers increasingly safe and effective.